Hello, and welcome to the November Bundle Tutorial. I'm thrilled that you're here. I'm sure you have enjoyed all of the tutorials thus far, but I want to welcome you here to my channel. So my name is Denise Willerton. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in East St. Paul, Manitoba, which is just a little suburb um, off of Winnipeg. So that is where I am. I would be honored if you would hit the subscribe button to my channel and just help me get my viewership up there. Hit the like because that helps in the, uh, the algorithms and all of that stuff. But without any further ado, let's get onto the card. So here is, let's change that view. Uh, there we go. That's what I want. Um, so this, this card base is actually a little bit odd because it's a different size. So it's a, a fun fold, okay? So rather than uh, folding it to make it a Z fold, I cut it. So our dimensions are six and a half by five and a half. And with your six and a half on your scoreboard, you're going to score at four and a quarter, which is what you normally do. So basically, just half of the card, okay? So let's start putting this Christmas card together. I'm sure that you saw, I'm looking for my silicone mat. Things go missing in my room. There it is. I don't know about you, but wow. Sometimes I just don't understand how I can lose things. So we're just going to put a little bit of adhesive down here. Tombow is my favorite um, adhesive. I do have um, the, oh, what is it called? Uh, what is it called? Now it's going to bug me. It is called the Stampin' Seal. That's what I thought it was. Um, but I still grab my Tombow first. So I just put that little strip of design paper on the front panel of the card and that measures um that measures five and three eighths by two and one eighths and you know if you ever get um i don't have any here because i'm i'm pretty pretty safe with my tombow but if you ever have tombow that leaks out you know what you do you grab your little, um, what I forget what this is called, and you just run that where the stickiness is, and it'll help to take that off. So, yeah. So just a little tip there for you. We are now going to grab, so I've got Evening Evergreen, and I've got So Saffron, okay? And they both measure the same, which is... Uh, four and one eighths by five and three eighths. And I'm going to run that through my cut and emboss machine. Let's grab that baby. And I will try my best not to shake the table. And we're going to grab our layering dioramas. So when you have, when you open the package, they're all laying down like so. We're going to take the first two. See how they nest into each other? Those two nest and um, this one does not nest anywhere or does it? Oh look at that it does nest. So these three nest, these two nest into each other and these two nest into each other. But they're really, really neat because they can make um, just so many different designs. But we're going to grab, now I can't get it. We're going to grab that one out. And I want the first two, okay? I did not realize that all three of those nested. I want to grab my bigger one. Is that the, uh, yeah. I'm going to grab my bigger one and we're going to do Evening Evergreen first. Let's come back into the camera. And so that just 
fits on there like so. And let's run that through. Trying not to shake the table, but I know it is. Sorry. My table's shaky when I use... I usually do all of my die cutting before I do my videos, but I wanted to show you what I was doing. So we're going to put the big guy away. We're going to take next in line. I can't lift things up off my table. And we're going to put so saffron down. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to lay that down on there. And run that through. So this is just kind of a funky little fun fold that we have going on. So now we've got our two panels and we're done with that for a bit. I forgot to bring my other plate for embossing. I'll have to scoot out and get that. We're going to put these two down on top of each other like so, but I want to run that through my cut and emboss machine using the painted texture embossing folder. And I just need to grab my plate. I forgot to bring that forward. Let's get my sandwich ready here to emboss that. And we're going to get a little bit messy here with Tombow and some gilded leaf. Oh, you know what? Your sandwich is just the one, then your embossing folder, and then the number four, which is that gray plate for embossing. And here it comes. Get all of that noise put away. So normally I would do all of these before I do my video, but I really wanted to um, walk you through that. So that is the painted texture embossing folder. We're going to take this little guy that we just did, and I want to grab a sponge because I'm going to put a dab of glue, well, a little bit bigger than a dab, about that on there. Get my gilded leafing ready. It just flies everywhere, doesn't it? Okay, we're going to pick up that glue. Now it's on my sponge, and I am just going to randomly put that on here. No rhyme or reason, just getting it off the sponge. And then let's just cover that. And so this gilded leafing is just going to stick wherever there is adhesive and then come off where there is none. And it looks like a hot mess right now because it is. Let's see if I can flick that back into. Here's my container. There's where I keep my gilded, and it sticks to the silicone mat. So you know what? I My advice, don't use the silicone mat. Oh my bad. I'll have to clean that after. So here is my panel, and then I'm just going to take half of the sponge. So do not use the silicone mat for that not a good idea. And so this sponge is fabulous. It just takes all the excess off 
and it just gets to get dumped right back in to my bucket. I don't know if you can see that. And it's nicely adhered. I have a hot mess. Okay, let's get the cover back on there and put that away. Don't sneeze when you're using this. It would not be pretty. Okay, we're going to adhere these together. Now you could offset them like so, but I don't think that would look as nice as this. Okay, and now my silicone mat is a mess because normally that's where I would be putting my panel down here to grab my glue. Let's put that down like so. And if I turn that over, I can give it a good massage. Okay, so we've got that. Now we're going to take our card base and we're going to use that as our template. Okay, so you can decide which way you want it. If you want it this way or if you want it that way. And I think I kind of like that look. So I want to know where my score line is. So that's what I'm doing right now. So if you grab your stamp and trimmer and kind of decide where you want it, then you just move, whoops, your card stock or your card base out of the way. Give that a good, I'm, I'm pressing fairly hard. I want to make sure that I have a good score line because I am going through two layers and you can see it right there. And then we're going to give that a really good burnish. So I'm going to fold that where my score line is. It's having a little bit of a hard time, but we're just going to help it along. And then give that a good burnish. It feels a little sticky because of the gilded leafing. Do that on both sides here. Now if it if it bothers you that the back of the card would be like this, you could put adhesive here and just have that on the inside of your card like so and then put a panel on the inside but you know what for me I don't mind that back there you know that's just kind of it's different it's different so I'm going to very carefully put my adhesive on here I'm going to stay away from my score line. I don't want to get too close to that. Make sure that I'm tucked in nicely and give that a little press. So you can see your card is coming together already. Now I am going to, I'm going to try something. So see my silicone mat? See that hot mess on there? I'm going to see what would happen <laughs> if I did this again. So I'm going rogue here, which is something I never do. Let's see. So I'm just kind of twisting some adhesive on there and I'm going to see if it'll pick 
some of this up and it is now my silicone mat and tabletop don't look quite as bad and then on this side there was a whole whack of it I think I'm gonna like it we're gonna pull that sponge out again I don't know if I've got no nope, there's still a little bit of adhesive right there you can kind of feel where the sticky is and then you can just keep building it yeah you know what I think I got most of it most of the adhesive that was sitting there covered okay so let's get that sponge out again you want to open your lid slow because see how it's just very staticky like it just it follows you let's pick that up and let's so I'm basically just I'm rubbing it in a little a little um, harder and then it also takes the excess off I think I'm gonna like that that was not part of the plan but it sure is now now when I do a belly band this is just me when I do a belly band I find if I measure and then do my scores my belly band is always way too tight and it just never works for me so this is how I like to do my belly band I just like to use my card as Oh, and I cut that the wrong size. Very interesting. That was supposed to have been eight and a half inches long, and I guess it wasn't. Well, I guess we really are going rogue, aren't we? So that was... So your belly band is... Let's see. Your belly band is... Eight and a half by one and a half. What did I do here? That is eight and a half. You know what? My tutorial was wrong. It's eleven and a half by one and a half. Well, now I liked all that gilding on there. So let's just stick with that plan. I just want to double check on the whole belly band thing. Yep, my measurements were incorrect. So you know what? Let's do a repeat on that. And I'll just grab some fresh gilded because I actually ended up liking that. So sometimes our little faux paws can become a great pivot point. There's a little bit of gilded right there. Let's just pick some of this up. And then I'll go into my bucket if none of this is... In the bucket we go. And so, rather than using the silicone mat, let's grab a piece of scrap paper, which I always have on hand. And when it comes to this, I find less is more. So don't put too much adhesive down because you might end up being disappointed. Brush that off. Let's get into the camera here, Denise. I actually love this stuff.
Okay. And there is a tiny bit of excess. Can't do that with a silicone mat. Okay. A little bit of a mess going on here. Okay, now let's do our belly band wrap. So I started there a little bit, and then we're going to also grab our score, um, our, uh, I'm at a loss for words here today, our burnishing tool, our bone folder, that's the word I'm looking for. Grab your bone folder, give it a good burnish on both sides. If you feel that it's still a little bit sticky, grab your embossing buddy, and that will help to take some of that stickiness off. Okay, like so. Now we've got our belly band. You could decide which way you want it. I like to go this way because I like my seam sort of in the middle. This way I can hide it when I decorate. I'm not too worried that my cutting was actually off. I can trim that. I don't know if you can see that. See where it's just a little bit right there. So let's just follow the line and voila. But it, that would get hid anyway. So let's get a little bit of adhesive down on here for our belly band. I was a little bit generous in one area there. I see it oozing a bit. That will slip beautifully on there. And so when I score my belly band, they never work. So I like to just do them by hand. How about you? So now I took that beautiful DSP, and this is the, the Bows of Holly. We're going to put dimensionals behind here and see my seam is already getting getting hid. So let's get some dimensionals behind there. I want to make sure that I'm staying in where the image is. So if you flip that over this way, you can use your belly band as your guide so that your dimensionals aren't hanging over because you don't want that. And then if I grab a mini and put a mini just about there, you could also, when once this is down, you could take Wink Estella, and maybe we will do that later, and um, just color that flower up with some Wink. Actually, let's do that right now. I love Wink of Stella. I'm sure everybody does. I mean, it's a Christmas card, right? So let's get some glitz happening on there. Nothing fancy, just kind of scribbling back and forth. And I'm going to do the whole image. Oh, I'm loving this. I am loving this. I don't know if you can see that shimmer on there, but it's gorgeous. So again, if you would subscribe to my channel, I would be honored. Let's give that a color. So we're going to grab, let's do it this way. Let's grab our dark, soft succulent, and I want the brush tip end, and let's color those seam or the uh, the stems. I'm 
These are so beautiful. So, so fun. I wonder if Wink Estella would work on that. I've never tried that. And then I'm going to grab Dark Cherry Cobbler. And I'm just going to use my bullet tip end. See the difference when you put a little bit of color on there? Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? And I'm going to also use those gold leaf, what were they called? Gold holly leaves, which are absolutely stunning as well. I'm going to try wink on the very tip. of the uh, of the stem. I want to see if it if it shows up and if it does, let's do it. Why not, right? Can never have too much glitz. Let's see if this is going to work. Oh my. Oh my. Okay. I've never done this on these elements. It's gorgeous. I can't wait to show you. Hang on one second. Just about done. Doesn't take long. Now that's a little bit messy, but I'm not too worried about it. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, I wish you could. Oh, I think you can. Look at that. Oh, it's gorgeous. I've got three leaves. I've got two small and one larger. So now I just want to determine where I want this, and I think I like it. Oh my goodness, I'm loving this. There or, okay, I've got berries here already. I am going to go on that side, and I'm just going to put a little dash of Tombow on that side and that side. And try not to get it everywhere. Tuck that in like so. Loving it. Loving it. Then you're going to grab your glue dots for our gold holly leaves. So our banner is just about done. So if I just... What size do I want? That side? or that side. There is a right side. That side. And I'm going to go this way. And let's tuck that right in here. Whoops, that moved. Oh no, it's good. Then we're going to grab our small one. I just want to make sure that I'm, I think there's a right side and a wrong side on these. Tuck a little guy right here. Why not? And where do I want my other one? I am loving my belly band. I think this is one of the nicer belly bands I've ever done. And you know what? I think it's because of all the wink. I'm not going to lie. I think it's the wink. Let's put that right there. Or do I want it there? Or do I want it here? I think I want it there. Look at that belly band. It's gorgeous. Okay, let's do a little something on the inside of our card. The belly band is done. So now here is, let's open it up. Here is the inside of our card like so. And I'm gonna grab leaves of holly and I want peace and joy. And I want 
piece down here. So I'm going to close, I'm going to close this on purpose. Whoops, sorry about that. Because I want to see where I'm lined up. And I like the piece there. So let's pick that up. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. There's Joy. And then on the inside, So I've got joy and peace, and when I close this, it's not going to show, and that's the look that I want, and I know that I'm straight, and then, got a lot going on here. Let's grab, so on the, on the leaves, these two work together, those two work together, and these berries work together. I'm not going to bother with the berries because I've got a lot going on already with my belly band. But how fun would that be if I had, so the one that has the more marking is kind of the underside of the leaf. So I want that about there, like so. So let's pick that up. You know what? I think I want it just a smidge taller. I want it more in the corner like that. And that stays away from the joy as well. Okay. So now, whoops, I lost my appersand. There we go. So now let's ink that up. I shouldn't have put that big guy down. We're taking it off. We're taking it off. We're going to use Evening Evergreen on our sentiments. Or should I use Shaded uh, Soft Succulent? No, you know what? Let's stick with Evening Evergreen. And then let's give that a gentle massage. I love my pressure tool. My girlfriend actually makes these and, um, and sells them. So if you are interested, just drop me a line and I can get a hold of her for you. This is just an old Norwex cloth, which is my favorite way of cleaning my stamps. And it just swallowed up my appersand. There it is. Let's tuck those there so I don't lose them. Okay, now on to the leaves. We're going to tuck the one that has more of the design because that is the base of your leaf. And I, I wanted that stem hiding under this panel. So that's what, that's why I'm doing all of that shuffling. And we're going to use soft succulent on the base of the leaf. My soft succulent looks like it's pretty juicy. Give that a little massage. Like so. I love using that cloth to clean my stamps. I just feel that I get a really good clean with it. I'm just lining this up. Now I want to make sure, now that I've got that lined up, I want to make sure that nothing moves. So I'm going to stick my bone folder in there and hold it down so that nothing moved at all. Okay. Now I've got evening evergreen. I 
think I did it backwards. I think I did. Well, let's see what happens. I think I was supposed to have done it the other way around. The evening evergreen on the other portion. Yep, definitely. It didn't come through the way it was supposed to. So on, yeah, I didn't look at the pictures properly. So these darker ones, which is this, are the background. So let me show you what this actually should have looked like. I am sure I've got a piece of scrap somewhere. So let me show you what I was going for. So don't say as I, no, how does that go? Don't do as I, I can't remember how that goes. So I'm going to use the, um, I did it backwards. I'm going to use the softer color on the full picture. So soft succulent should have been on this image. Whoops, which is what I was going for. Just a comedy of errors here today. Thank you for being patient with me. Please don't go away. So soft succulent on the fuller, which is this one. And then the other one is your shading. So I've got that down. Let's give that a clean. And this one is going to be Evening Evergreen. Okay, so I want to pick that up. I want to make sure that my paper does not move. Stick my bone folder in there. Nothing has moved. Evening Evergreen. And down it goes. So sorry about that. So here is the look that I was going for. And I'm pretty sure that you can see the difference how I had um, this, this dark evening evergreen should have been my soft succulent. So I did it backwards. So that would look more like that in the card, okay? But we're gonna close that up like so. Slip the belly band on, which I'm loving. And there is your card. I hope you create this. And if you do, I would love to see it. I can be reached at, let me show you, I can be reached right here at Denise Willerton, which is my name, at gmail.com. And again, if you hit the subscribe button, I would be honored. I would, I would just be honored if you would do that and also hit the like button too. So with that, we are done. Thank you so much for popping by. I hope you enjoy the uh, November tutorial bundle. Have a look at all the dem demonstrators. Follow all of us. It would just do us a great favor if you did. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. We will talk to you later. Bye-bye.